Greetings, Diocese of Olympia and all who might be watching. When I first became bishop, I kept seeing on our list of churches something called St. Bernard's Chapel, Snoqualmie Pass. I would occasionally ask where it was. Bill Goodenough, our property person extraordinaire when I arrived, said it was right at the base of a ski slope. You can't miss it, he said. And yet the first time I went to ski, I couldn't find it. When I described to Bill where I'd been standing, he said you were practically on top of it. And so I was. St. Bernard's Chapel is tucked into the base of Summit West, one of the four sections that make up the Snoqualmie Ski Area. The picturesque building has been a spiritual home to skiers in western Washington for nearly 60 years, with Episcopal, Lutheran, and Roman Catholic services meeting the needs of winter worshipers over the last six decades. In the late 1950s, the Episcopal Diocese of Olympia partnered with Lutheran churches, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese, and private donors to build the chapel that still stands to this day. After securing a formal land use agreement with the United States Forest Service, the chapel was dedicated in 1960, and the diocese worked with the Church Council of Greater Seattle to organize an ongoing rotation of services hosted by different faith communities. During its early years, St. Bernard's Chapel was filled with bustling activity from early January through Easter Sunday. There were as many as four services held every Sunday, one Episcopal, one Lutheran, and two Roman Catholic services. Clergy within the Diocese of Olympia were offered a free hotel room, meals, and a ski pass for each Sunday service they presided over. Our property manager, the Reverend Dennis Turney, likes to refer to St. Bernard's Chapel as a diocesan brigadoon, the mysterious Scottish village of legend that only appeared for one day every 100 years. We, the Diocese of Olympia, have been little more than landlords of late, but just recently the Archdiocese made the decision that they no longer wanted oversight of the chapel, and through the good work of Dennis, who made a connection with the people there, they have asked that we work with them now on that oversight. It's an incredible part of the Diocese of Olympia's history that can be easily overlooked and forgotten, but one that has a lot of potential for the future and has a bustling and committed group of people who make it come alive every Sunday. Dennis has already been with them to lead worship and to preach, and I had the great honor and pleasure of presiding over a service, and I'm delighted to share with you now this unique piece of diocesan history. It's a wonderful story about deep faith against institutional neglect and high odds. St. Bernard's Chapel has been in existence as an interfaith, interdenominational chapel since 1958. The Moffats, who owned the Snoqualmie ski area under a lease from the U.S. Forest Service, had this idea that there should be an opportunity for people to go to church and to ski. Virginia Moffat, in particular, had this vision for an interdenominational chapel at the base of the ski slope. Turns out the Episcopalians paid the bulk of the money. So in 1958, the chapel was finished and it used to provide four services on a Sunday, two Roman Catholic and two Protestant. So for the first 10, 15 years of the chapel's existence, it was a roaring success. They would have upwards of 800 people in multiple services on a Sunday morning, all in their ski clothes, literally standing room only in this little A-frame chapel. There were baptisms, there were a couple of weddings, so it was an amazing operation. And then kind of the Protestant interest dwindled. They had lots of services when it began, but remember that was in the 50s. It was harder to get priests to go up there. The Roman Catholic attendance started to drop off. It got harder to maintain the rota of clergy to offer official services. And so after the Moffats sold their interest in operating the ski area, the new owners had this idea to turn the chapel into a video arcade. And the local people objected strenuously because they were going to lose their little quaint, wonderful chapel.
When I came on board as the property manager, we weren't even sure who was using the building. Curiously, the people who lived in vacation homes around the Smoke Palmy ski area adopted the chapel as their church. It just happened. God's at work up here. He surrounded it with a group of people that have it going. I came with my wife. My husband and I wanted to find a church and get involved with the neighbors. I've been coming to St. Bernard's Chapel since I think the second service. There was like no heat in here at the time. I could see my music through my breath and my fingers pretty much were frozen, but they knew where to go on the guitar fret, so it was all good. We came three months after they started. We've been doing it for 20 years. We heard about St. Bernard's and we bopped in here one morning and I saw everybody was sitting down, just relax, have a coffee, listen to the word. And I was like, yes. How could you not get started and then stay? They take care of each other. That's what this community is up here. The community is a close community and share their faith and worship together. We're an open community here. Really welcoming. It's like family. This is like a family. We feel so welcome. We're just drawn by the, the closeness of the, the people. This is like our spirit community. All the people around here are just genuine and at home. and Worship here in the morning and go out and ski the same day. We've built a home here together of faith with all of our, our neighbors. They love the chapel. It's filled with local artists' wood carving. People like Adi Hentz who came and did all the artwork. He was in Germany, he was captured by the Russians, put in a prison camp for five years, and then came back. But he taught himself to carve wood. And in carving the wood, he could forget about what happened in the war. And then he just kept going with all the wood around him. There's a statue of St. Bernard with the St. Bernard in memory of a Roman Catholic priest one of the first Catholic priests up here was from Belgium. He was a chaplain for the U.S. ski team, and he was on the plane that went down and they all died. And the people of Denmark sent the sculpture of St. Bernard and the dog to this chapel in his honor. And people have done other sorts of things. Barb, she's an artist, and she's the one who redid the front mural, lifted the mural in the back did the flowers all the way around. I chose flowers that had scriptural meaning, like the red, the blood of Christ, the purple flowers represent heaven, and the green, eternal life. Whatever our gifts are, we're using it here. I always get more than I ever give up here. Team do a great job in teaching. I certainly learn quite a bit. I've grown as a believer from being in this chapel. When we enter the door, we take the soup can labels off of the denominations, and we worship Jesus Christ as our Lord, and that's what keeps us here. And a feeling of love and companionship. The words of the music just echo what has been read in the readings in the Gospel. We're bringing the good news. It's joy, plain and simple. This is our number one go-to. Everyone is welcome at any time for however long you want to spend time with us. Like Tim says, it's a sheep pen with a gate with no lock because all are welcome here. I just have a belief that, that God's going to keep this place going. That's the power of the gospel is it just goes and goes. It's really a lovely group of people. Our goal is to let them be who they are to keep them interdenominational, and to support and nurture them in their ministry. They meet at 8.30 on Sunday mornings during ski season, and then in the non-ski season, they meet at 9 Sunday mornings. Their candlelit Christmas Eve service is enormously popular. The chapel is filled with the memories of the people who have worshiped there. And it's wonderful to worship there when it's snowing because it's just this magical kind of Brigadoon sort of experience. It's a reminder to me that faith is not about a lot of money. Faith is not about a lot of organizational structure. Worshiping in this amazing space, it's all about the people.
how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, Isaiah 52, 7. Yeah.